Okay. My name is Zadok Tumuimbise, National Chairperson, Uganda National Teachers Union. Today, the 1st October 2020, I'm here in Ila to officiate at the UNATO's Gender and Women Empowerment Training Workshop. Uh, UNATO started this Gender and Women Empowerment Strategy and uh, our dream was to, say, uh, to see all gender gaps within the education system closed with all female educators fully empowered and as a result supporting girls of go school going age to access quality education and perform optimally in schools. Uh, the union uh, therefore developed a gender and women empowerment strategy which was launched at Kariya Courts in Fort Portro in 2012. And since then, we have been implementing the strategy through trainings of this kind, through women's roundtable conferences and information, education and communication materials. So, as you know too, we perceive women empowerment to be a situation where we are increasing the spiritual, political, social or economic strength of women. We envisage <clears throat> Uh, an empowered female educator who is well informed about their rights and responsibilities, who are self-confident and able to pursue leadership positions within the union, within her, their communities and other levels when the opportunity presents itself. A woman edu or female educator who is able to learn and implement income generating activities to empower herself and her community financially, an educator that is able to embrace and cope with the dynamic world of work, where he embraces ICT, and finally, a woman educator that is able to become an agent of change in the girl's education and a role model for the girl child. Because we have a strong belief that if you educate a man, you educate an individual, but if you educate a woman, you educate the whole nation. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this training, we hope, is very timely because it has been reported that the cases of violence against women and children have drastically shot up during the COVID-19 lockdown. On April 28th, 2020, the Minister of Gender and Labor, Labor and Social Development reported the media that in the period of 30th March to 28th April 2020, these cases of uh, gender-based violence had uh, risen up to 3,280. And additionally, in a media briefing on 9th August 2020, the Minister of ICT reported that over a period of five months, from March to July, Uganda police registered 21,000 cases of violence against children, and over 50% of these cases happened at home. So it is important to note that these statistics account for only the reported cases and are likely lower than the actual number of cases of, uh, of gender-based violence. Therefore, important that as a teacher or teachers, we use part of this workshop to deliberate on how we can empower our fellow women and our learners to address this nationwide problem. It is also important that as teachers, we recognize and understand the effect of such a violence on our learners. As schools and institutions are reopening, let us refrain from being perpetrators of similar violence. We need to endeavor to create a safe and friendly school environment for our learners. Because the moment they find the situation much more hostile at school than what they have been experiencing at home, we shall not have them in school and we shall have rendered our nation to a situation that is undesirable in the future. Because when we don't have school, children in schools today, 
it means we have a very big challenge and many gaps in as far as uh, service delivery is concerned. That the lockdown has been eased and uh, it has enabled us to conduct some of our planned activities and uh, as teachers we are in full year preparing for the commemoration of our teachers day which is on 5th October and uh, we shall have our national celebrations where is excellent the president of Uganda is expected as the chief guest and we will therefore host the national celebrations at the state house in Tebe where a total number of 50 participants is expected including the teacher leaders, the members, the strategic partners, officials from different line ministries, and as well as ministers. We shall have the district or branch celebrations, and the branches are expected to select 10 schools per sub county, where trees will be planted. In each school, a minimum of 10 trees will be planted by a selection of 10 teachers per school. Plan is to prepare for the World Teachers Day celebrations in branches are underway. We expected the leaders in branches to update the members and inform them about how, where, how they are going to celebrate and who is going to be involved. And we request that in every situation, at every school and at every branch, we observe the SOPs in order to minimize the prevention and the spread of the COVID pandemic. Also, we, we are planning to hold our annual delegates conference, which is normally held in December, and the meetings of the national chairperson, of the branch chairpersons, which were held on 26th and 27th September. Resolved that we hold the annual delegates conferences in the regions where we shall meet the delegates from each region, and eventually we agree, we make resolutions that will guide our operation in the year 2021. We have also been the process of reviewing our constitution and uh, a form has been designed and is going to be saturated through to the members and leaders through the regional coordinators and regional leadership such that members and leaders participate in proposing the areas of the constitution that they need to be reviewed, such that we become, we all become active participants in the process because the constitution is ours all as teachers. I want to thank you so much. For your... And I want to say, and I must say that the situation, the COVID situation and the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic is real, but we must accept that we are working in the new, in the new normal and we must learn how to live with this virus. We cannot run away from it. There's nowhere we can hide. Yes, the government has proposed the reopening of schools and institutions come 15th October. And the government, through the Minister of Health, in collaboration with the Minister of Education, have put in place the SOPs. And therefore, those are the minimum standards that should be in schools, are expected to be in schools, in order to avoid or prevent the spread of the pandemic and to protect our children and teachers. As the teacher leaders and as a union, we are not going to say that we don't want to go to school, but what we want to observe is the government putting in place the SOPs they have actually put in place. Let them put the, what is supposed to be in the schools and when we are sure that we are safe when we go to school, when the parents are sure that their children are safe, there's no problem with going to school and teach, starting on teaching. So the government has set an exam and it must pass it. They have said we want these 27 SOPs in the schools let them put those SOPs in schools. When they are put, we shall go and teach. We are not worried of teaching. What we have what to teach, we have the ability and willingness to go and teach, but in a safer environment. An environment where we are sure that we are not going to be victims of the pandemic.
I know that that leadership position. Yeah. Are you that leader with a rotten head? Rotten head? How does one develop into a leader? Yes, I know you became you came into those positions. Were you born a leader? No. How did you become leader? Not all made. Good leaders are made. They are not born. They are what? They are made. Even you, someone made you. Okay? Someone inspired you. Someone nurtured you. Someone mentored you. So in your position as a Yonato leader, whom have you nurtured to get into your footsteps when you stand aside? Whom, which other woman have you mentored? Mine is there. Ambrose Ogwan. Uh, my name is Ambrose Ogwan. I represent secondary school teachers at Uganda National Council Executive Council. I am also the proprietor and the executive director of Wisdom High School, which is located in Akalo Sub County, Kuala District. We are set as teachers to resume teaching on the 15th and as a leader of teachers at the national level our position is that teachers of UNATO are ready to start teaching on the 15th of October as directed by the Minister of Education and Sports but we have also challenging government to put in place the standard operating procedures because those standard operating procedures is like an examination that government has set and we want government to pass it Without uh, the uh, financing and putting in place of the standard operating procedure, uh, the teachers will be endangered, the learners will also be endangered. But uh, that is for the government schools. But for private schools like mine, Wisdom High School, government has been very clear to us that the private schools have to innovate means and uh, meet the cost of those SOPs. I speak for and on behalf of Wisdom High School and I can say categorically clearly here that we are ready to receive students on the 15th October uh, 2020 and with those standard operating procedures in place. So the parents of Wisdom High School don't be afraid, don't fear to bring back the child of senior four and senior six, let them come. We are not going to admit those ones who are not in the candid classes because the government has been clear that they should not yet go back to school. We are going to wait. For those who are not in the candid classes, we shall have a day and call you to pick your luggages. But for now, we are set to receive those ones in candid classes and then we roll with uh, those requirements. Because there are some schools, especially government schools with a few students. Government does not even release more than one million. And if government does not release more than one million as a capitation grant, and yet government is saying that schools should pick money from that capitation grant to meet the cost of the SOPs. That's not good. Maybe parents will be encouraged to contribute. So some schools will find it difficult, especially even private schools. You have seen uh, or had teachers, uh, private school owners from Soroti. They are saying they are not ready to reopen because some of them have got uh, money for examinations, they have used it, money for mock, they have used it, now students are coming back. And some schools with a few students cannot operate now. Because if, for example, you have senior four, you have only about maybe 25 students or 30 students. Out of the 30 students, maybe only 18 will come back. And if you start demanding for fees seriously, the way the schools are likely to do, they will remain only about 10. Those ones cannot uh, finance the school. So some schools will not open. Other schools have too much loans. They cannot work. They cannot operate. Because now when they open, banks will demand their money, or the creditors will demand their money. There are schools who are, which are highly indebted. I'm very happy we are not in that category as Wisdom my School. We are ready to operate with the little resources that the students are going to and uh, I just want to say also that this year we have also got our center number and all our students are going to sit in the school. 
The moment we overemphasize rights and forget the responsibilities and obligations which we have, then we miss a point. Because every right must go hand in hand with responsibility. There is a path you are supposed to do in order to fulfill it. Now, you have maternity leave. That is your right. It is provided for. When you go to the Constitution, Chapter 4, Article 40, Clause 4, you have the protection. Every female worker has a protection during and after pregnancy. That is the Constitution. And from that provision of the Constitution, when you deliver, or when you are about to deliver, you are entitled to how many days? One, eh? 60 working days as maternity leave. Now, when you apply for maternity leave, your immediate supervisor's work is to forward. If you are in the primary, your supervisor who is the head teacher is forwarding to the DEO and the DEO is forwarding to the cow or town clerk. The work of the cow, the work of the town clerk is to grant not to negotiate or not to ask questions because it is your right. Now the other issues of saying you see the staff ceiling is not, is not complete, the class is going to suffer. Me as a female worker, I am not the one who put the provision of that right. Okay? So when it is time for me to get maternity leave, I must get my maternity. What happens the other side is the responsibility of who? But even if forced to remove the desks and they sit on ground. B7, what is the completion rate? I answered the figures. What is the completion rate? 47. But in the P1, they were? The circle goes on when you go to senior one, they have remained. By senior four, they have dropped out. Mm -hmm. But even when you talk of school dropout, there is a particular sex that is more affected. And the question as we're going to that justification, where do they go? And that's why I'm coming to speak the truth, curse you, and then until we get to know that the value of girls' education is important. When they leave the schools, we even from the minister, Harriet and me, we are responsible. I heard somebody was saying she's a secondary school teacher there. We sit somewhere in the Kampala and conduct what we call a national selection exercise for senior one and senior five students. Let's begin from there, then we shall rush in. And what happens there in the government schools, whoever was 28 aggregates and below, he qualifies to be on USE. Right? Yeah. What happens to those schools? Yeah. Those are figures, statistics. Now you hear seated something. Senior one we see. I'm going to make a simple calculation for you. When you count a hundred girls in Uganda, 25 out of a hundred, they are what? Pregnant, leaving us with a percentage of what? 75. Whenever you say 1, 2, 3, are hundred, subtract the 25. In the Lera, in Oya, in the Wakiso, in the Ankole. It is out of this, this presentation. In each of the district, between March to July, 956 girls were pregnant this year. What? This year. Who is responsible? Who is responsible? Tell them. The parents. The parents. Yeah, and I'm so that you have said that one. 
that is sometimes the biological parent, the father, looks at this 10, 12, 13 year girl. I say, speak. the girls of the end of girls of sat. And I believe they brought one chizike, a koti, and an apple of living dog. Why girls? Have I started answering the question? Why? And the girls were, even you were girls before. So don't tell us, they are not a girl. Once you were a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Only 24% of the girl children do not experience violence according to that research. Only 20. Oh, oh. I'm going to start here. Don't look at where I'm going. So go, this is how uh, they pick them. Their relationship with the teachers, they even call her no teacher. Has Harriet eaten? Let me talk to her. How about those in a patch? 